Hello, uh, my name is Dino Ignacio and uh, I made this tricorder um, and I'm going to be installing Jerry's electronics kit in it. So uh, here, let's just go through all the parts. I made the main body, the lower body, and this is the funnel for the light to go on the screen. You'll see that I painted it black. Um, uh, I, I corrected this later on. I think it's better if you paint it silver so that it reflects the light back out to the screen. This is the sensor hood um, and I painted it black and added um, white and gray detailing to match the one from the show and it fits perfectly here on the front of the tricorder. Here is the electronics kit that you can buy from Jerry. I can provide the link down below later on. Um, it comes fully assembled. You have to solder a couple of things to some hinges, but other than that, everything is pre-wired and it's beautiful as you can see here. And this is me just trying to fit it before I do anything else. Um, one thing to note is that be careful when you set this up. Like as you can see here, I actually have it upside down. This is the right way to do it. Um, lights should fit perfectly to the sensor hood. Um, so this is a quick note, as you build, go through this build, it's important to turn on the lights every so often just to make sure that they do actually fit and B, to make sure that you're not popping any of the solder as you build. So here, let's start the build. Let's start off by snipping some of these transparent resin bits that I've made. Um, the links to the model will be available down below as well. This is a free model that I've created for anyone who wants to make the kit. So here's me just trimming the edges of the resin bits. You'll probably need to sand some of these things to fit them perfectly. So these go here on the sensor hood, as you can see. Um, you may have to figure out like um, if you got it upside down. Um, so you just turn it around if it's the wrong way. Um, it should only come in one way. So that's actually the wrong way to do it. Let's see the other way. Perfect. So here's me fitting all the other bits in here. Some of them come in from the bottom and some come in from the top. That should be obvious from the lip um, on the edges of the transparent bits. Um, most of them actually come in from the bottom. It's only two, sorry, rather three things that come in from the top. It's the top left um, sensor, the rounded one, and the two bottom ones. Those come in from the top. The rest come in from the bottom. Okay. So this is me just fitting all the little bits in there. As you can see, again, some of them will re re require some sanding. Um, not a whole lot, but uh, both on the transparent bits and maybe some of the holes. I recommend sanding sticks on the on the holes on the sensor hood to get in there. Um, it might be hard to just sand it with a regular sandpaper. <clears throat> so again, this is me fitting more of the bits in. Um, and you should, uh, I don't know if I videoed it, but then I, I then got some hot glue and added some hot glue to the back side of these things just to um, uh, fix them properly. Don't put too much because you're going to have to make sure that there's space for the board, electronics board to fit in there. So don't put too much hot glue. So this is me just fitting some of the rounded, the round little bulb bits for the light. Again, it's important to, um, as you test this and fit it, um, to sand things down to make sure they fit properly. And then um, see if you can um, run the lights, like um, just, um, you know, um, pressure fit them into the holes or the, rather the slot and then test it every so often. This makes sure that um, everything you're doing works. 
So this is me testing it right now. So next stage here is to actually um, hot glue this thing together. So the part that I didn't get to video was that I actually hot glued all those transparent bits to the sensor hood um, so they don't pop out. Um, okay, so this is me just adding a little bit of hot glue on the edges. You don't put too much, you don't need a whole lot. Um, nice thing about hot glue is that if you ever make a mistake, you can pop it out again. So it's in your best interest to just, um, just put enough to hold it, but not so much that it'll be hard to remove it if you need to. So this is me just adding a little bit along the edges and um, pushing the whole thing down as it dries or rather cools down. So the thing about hot glue, as you already probably know, is that it needs to cool down for it to adhere. So um, it's best to just like hold things in place as it cools down. Cool, so this is me just adding a little bit on this side. Okay. That's good. Now let's just hold it down for a little bit. Cool. That looks really cool. Um, I I just really love these electronics from from Jerry. Okay. The next stage is to slowly, and I mean slowly and carefully, um, run the cables for the sensor hood through the back of the tricorder and up to the front and um, to you have to make sure that you've figured out like which top is so in this case the top of the or rather the orientation of this whole thing should be that the the rounded um, transparent bit should be on the top left which is what i'm doing here right now and then you'll notice i'm not really gluing anything down right now because um i want to make sure all the other bits are in the right place before i do anything else um, so try not to do any uh, hot gluing at this point just uh see if you can align everything uh so one thing that you need to take note of is that you need to be very careful that you don't pop any of these wires right now. Um, it's very easy to do that. A lot of these things are um, are uh, very fragile, so be careful. Don't don't screw this up. Um, that said, if you do, it's very easy to just like solder it back together. Um, I, I may have popped a few ca cables along the way as I do this build. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to glue down. Um, this light uh, on the top of the tricorder. I should note that I, I actually forgot to do one thing here. Um, I should have put in the transparent bits for those two lights, but I actually neglected to print those. And so I'm just gonna do those last. But um, it's probably better if you do that before you put in these lights here. But if you don't, it's okay. Um, you can pop them in later. So this is me just testing the light as I go. Uh, like I said, it's important to make sure that the lights are aligning to the holes. And the only way to do that is to turn it on every so often before you do any of the hot gluing, just to make sure that it's in the right spot. So this is me just laying in the lights. Um, the boards are actually meant to fit perfectly into this 3D model. I created a little canals for them so they fit pretty well um, but that said it's just um, always test you may have things upside down before you do any major hot gluing make sure you're testing what you're building and testing how you're fitting things with uh, um, with the whole body okay so as you can see here it looks great again um, I, I missed putting um, a couple of the transparent resin bits for those two that's okay i can add those later okay 
So now that I've got that in there, the next thing I'm gonna do is glue down the the button the buttons. Um, I'm using the as you can see there. I'm using the charging charging cable to turn off the whole thing. Um, but yeah, so this is me trying to plug in the the button board into the tricorder. Um, I am gonna try to do that right now, right here. Okay, let's give it a shot. So again, being very careful here, just finding the right orientation. The, as you'll see on the button board, there's three buttons on there. See if you can match it to the holes on the tricorder. And like I said, there's a canal for it to fit and it fits perfectly in there. Uh, but just make sure you've got it the right spot. Okay, so now that you've figured that out, you can add the glue and, um, and um, push that down in there as it cools down. Yeah, there's a lot of um, uh, fitting things in here and the key is to just be very gentle and careful as you go. It's very easy to screw this up. Okay, and then so, and that's, that's the reason why it's important to just turn it on every so often just to see if you broke anything along the way. Um, the, what I'm trying to do here is see if I can video it for you as I go, but it's very hard to video that um, area while I go, but you get the picture. I'm just adding glue and holding it down over the, over the piece. Okay. Cool. So now that that's in there, um, and see that, let's just let it cool down a bit and it doesn't hurt to add a little bit more hot glue to make sure that it's really um, secure in there. Especially those buttons, they're gonna need to be pressed. And so if that's the case, it'd be better if um, you um, add a little bit more glue there to make sure that when you press it, it doesn't uh, pop off. see that that works. Let's just add more glue. Try not to burn yourself. I did that a few times. <laughs> cool. So now that those two pieces are in place, uh, we can start to seal the front uh, sensor array. I'm not gonna glue this down yet, just in case things move around, but um, it's good to just at least like pop that thing in place so um, it doesn't like swing around as I move the whole tricorder um, around. So good, that looks great. And then again, Test um, as you go, test often. So it seems like all the lights are still in place, that's good. Now let's start working on the lower body real quick. So this is me just adding um, this transparent bit right here. As you can see, it doesn't quite fit. Um, I'm gonna sand that piece down. Um, both the transparent part and also the lower body. You can use um, a filing stick like this one and then also you can get these um, really cool um, sanding sticks from Amazon uh, they work great uh, they're great for like little holes that you need to get into if you need to sand things down um, I love these things I can put the link to them in the description as well They're awesome.
Okay. That should work. Let's give it a shot. Looks like it's a good pressure fit. Awesome. Cool, it looks great. Okay. So now let's just glue that in place. It's pressure fit and it seems fine, but it doesn't hurt to just add some glue on it. Perfect. So while I'm at it, um, maybe it's a good time to add the magnet to that little area um, for the reed switch. Awesome. So the kit should have come with a little magnet and um, that goes in there. I should say that um, um, I added I added a little canal for a magnet there. I may modify the model. I, I, I realized that um, that might not be the perfect spot for a magnet. And so I actually added the second one later and you'll see that. Um, but yeah, make sure you add the, ma the magnet there. I may adjust that spot um, by the time you print this. And if not, it's okay. You can add a, mag a second magnet there. Um, even though there's no slot, you can just glue it on. Okay, so this is me just organizing the bottom of the, sorry, rather the, the, the board for the main body. Before you do any um, gluing, the, the important thing is to make sure everything fits. So this is me just doing a test fit for the lower part. And um, the way you do this, and it's very finicky, is that you first try to... Um, run the power light which is that red light on the top of the board okay and don't forget to glue down the reed switch underneath the main board it goes right down there so as you can see there i popped it in and everything fits perfectly that's good um i can probably uh, use an exacto blade to make sure that i've cleared that bottom light there Anyway, everything seems to fit. So next thing I'm going to do is I think I'm confident that the top part of the tricorder is in a good spot. It's a good time to glue this down. As you can see, I'm not using hot glue here. I'm using E6000. The reason for that is that E6000 um, is a little less goopy. And so um, in areas that I might become exposed, um, I tend to use this. It's also, um, it, it takes longer to dry, but it's a lot stronger, I think. So a little bit goes a long way. And um, much like, um, much like hot glue, it's very forgiving. You can, you, if you make a mistake, you can pop this off and do it again. Um, I recommend, I recommend this over super glue any day. Super glue tends to um, be permanent. Okay, the hinges. I could have done this better. I painted mine gray, um, as you can see there. Um, I could have done that better, um, but you know this works. So uh, this is the positioning for the um, hinges. Uh, make sure you get it right. Um, and do some trial fittings before you do um, glue these things down. But um, as you can see here. I'm putting glue on the front face of the hinge and um, <clears throat> that, that the, the glue is on the side that faces out. The reason for that is that I want the other side to not have any glue so I can solder to it. Cool? Awesome. So that's good. And um, Let's do the other one. Again, glue on the front face. So we can solder to the other side. Now, the if you haven't seen it, the, the model or the print, 
here is designed to have a hole on the other side of um, that little pocket for the hinge that you can use to solder power that can run through the conductive hinges to the other side to the uh, to the lower body of the tricorder. So this is the reason why we didn't quite glue this piece down yet. I want to make sure that I've got room to solder these things in there. Um, so if you can see there, you've got these two spots where you need to do some soldering. Um, this hole right here on the left and this hole you have on the right. So the best way to do this is to just solder these things in there. So the black goes on one side and the red goes on the other. So the way I do it is I pre-fill the two holes with solder so it's very easy to just um, uh, um, heat it up and then drop the wires in there. So this is me now adding glue to the lower body and much like the main body, the glue goes just on one side. Just spread that a little bit and then put it in. Perfect. We'll do some paint touch up there later, make it prettier. Awesome. Okay, so on this side again, I'm gonna pre-fill those two holes with some solder so that I can just like heat up um, a couple of those wires and solder them into those two holes. Okay, so this is what we're gonna solder to that thing. First, the red goes to this side. I'm really bad at soldering, so um, I hope you can do better than me in this part. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Cool. So with that in, let's see if it works. Boom, it lights up. That means our um, our soldering works. I, I'm pretty proud of myself. I usually suck at this. Cool, okay. So now let's glue that light in onto that um, emergency button perfect so again this is a good time to always like, just turn on the whole thing to see if it's in the right spot it is perfect good cool let's add more glue to that to make sure it doesn't pop off okay just goop it on. Okay. So now there's a light that goes to the ID button on the bottom of the, the lower um, lower body. See if we can attach that now. This these cables are really thin, so please be careful with it. Okay, so that goes there. Um, I've got this little transparent bit that goes in that hole. Um, as you can see, we may need to sand it down. Not to worry. Okay, so it should be in. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is um, 
to enable that um, uh, second read switch. So this is the read switch that this is a read switch that um, makes the tricorder make a sound when you start to close it up again. So there's a read switch on this side and then a magnet on the other. So there's a, I put a little hole for it and then um, uh, there's a magnet on this side. So what happens is when that magnet separates from that read switch, it should start to make a sound. It's that same um, ratchet sound that happens when you open the tricorder. It also happens when you close it. This, if it's not, if it doesn't work too well, um, just make sure that the the read switch is in the right spot. I um, I'm gonna adjust that and um, fix it. Okay, so for the screen, um, again, like I said, I should have painted this silver. That's easy to fix. Um, but yeah, again, this is another opportunity to make sure that you're turning on the whole thing to test it before you glue. Um, there you go. Okay. You know, the awesome thing about um, using glue gun, a glue gun is that, you know, A, you can remove it if you make a mistake, and B, it, um, uh, it cures very quickly, right? So within seconds of you laying it in, it's, it's pretty rigid, um, and that's awesome. Make sure all three um, LEDs are able to shine through the funnel. Cool. And that goes right there. So don't glue that down. You still need to print out a transparency. Um, I don't have any right now, so it's not going to be part of this first video. But I will do that at, at some point um, and show you how you can sh put that in there. I'm also working with Jerry to figure out if we can eventually add a screen, an actual working OLED screen to that. Um, to that window cool so everything's everything's working um, that looks great so now let's um, let's work on the stickers again here's here's um, here's the full thing um, I've done a few adjustments since the last uh, shot uh, the the second read switch should be working now. It was acting funny earlier. I had to make a few adjustments, but it's fine. It works now. Got it working. Okay. So, um, the next thing we're gonna do is work on the decals and the magnetic enclosures for this whole thing. So as you can see here, I've actually started to do that. I've added um, a bunch of magnets. So these are uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna add a link to where I got these specifically and what size they are, but basically you add these magnets and the 3D model should have holes that fit them perfectly. Um, you may require um, to um, run a drill bit through the holes a little bit to make them slightly bigger if they don't fit. Um, don't use a mechanical drill; just the drill bit. Just run it through the holes with your hands. 
um, just to make the holes a little bit bigger if they are indeed um, too small. But anyway, this is how it goes. I added magnets um, that make this uh, close properly. Let me show you how I do it. So on this side, I'm going to do it um, and show you. So first, add magnets to the panel like so. And it's not so important um, which polarity the magnets are, um, at least on one side, right? And so the next thing I do is I add a second magnet to sit on top of um, those four magnets. And I'll show you why I'm doing that. I then, um, uh, so again, just add these four on top of the four that you already have. And then you get a Sharpie. Well, let's see. Okay, so let's get a Sharpie. And mark the bottoms of these second magnets that sit on top of the other ones. The reason why I'm marking this is so that I know which side to glue onto the main body. So basically, I want to make sure that these match up in polarity. And the best way to do that is to make is to mark them so that I know which side I'm gluing down. So this is me just making sure everything's marked. You can do this with um, some paint or in my case, I just use a Sharpie. So here I am, I'm going to add some E6000 into the four holes. Again, I'm using E6000 in these areas because um, uh, they're less goopy than hot glue and uh, they take a little while longer to dry so it's more forgiving. I'm not rushing as I do this. I can uh, move things around. So again, I grab one of the magnets, make sure that I don't see the sharpie because it should be in the bottom right um, if you're seeing the sharpie marking that you did that you made turn the magnet around um, you want to make sure that the sharpie um, ink is p facing downwards and then I'm using a little tool here to just like shove that magnet in there cool and I'm gonna do that for the other three sides there may be other ways to do this, but this is how I do it. Oh, and also the inside of this tricorder looks like a real mess right now. Um, I plan to clean this up, maybe even add a mount for the speaker and possibly change the um, the, the, the charging port to a um, wireless one but um, for now I'm keeping it a little bit loose because um, I still want to do some mods to the inside of this tricorder and so I don't want to I don't want to make anything permanent yet and that's why things are a little loose in there and so it looks ugly um, but once it's closed up um, it's fine no one knows that it's a mess in there but yes I do get it um, I plan to clean that up at some point. So again, this is the fourth magnet, making sure that the Sharpie end is on the bottom and matching up with my um, enclosure panels. So I'm gonna let that dry. Um, and while I do that, let's, let's do some of the decals. So here on the right, as you can see, I've got little pieces of styrene. And um, they're 1 16th of an inch thick. And um, I just cut little squares. And the reason I have made them is I want to make sure that um, after we when, we, when we press on these buttons, that you don't have to put a lot of effort and push down on the stickers too much. This makes sure that the, the decals don't get deformed by the buttons when you press them. And um, they just feel a lot better when there's a little bit of a um, little bit of a um, cushioning in there under the decals. So this is me just trimming 
the styrene to make sure it fits perfectly. If you're wondering what those magnets on the hinge are, um, I just found that that's an easy way to turn off the tricorder while you're working. If you put magnets there, it's close enough to the reed switch that it turns off the whole thing while you're working and testing things. So it's a quick way to just like um, turn it off and turn it on. So there you go. So those fit pretty well. So let's start putting on the decals. So these decals I printed with my um, inkjet printer and my Cricut. Um, and I used a die cut, kiss cut sticker setting. I also put uh, I put a uh, UV laminate on top of, top of them, so they're they're really slick and professional looking. I'm considering um, selling those. Um, we'll see if people need them. So I actually reprinted the, uh, these stickers later on. They they look a little too light right now to the point where there's not enough contrast between the tricorder body and the sticker. So these aren't the final ones. I've adjusted them since this um, this video. But in any case, let's see how this works. So this is me popping on the top um, stickers. And um, well, there you go. It works pretty well. Cool. And here's the the main face sticker. Uh, I don't know if you notice here, but my bio light turned off. Um, for some weird reason. Um, I think something is loose in the back. Again, always be careful with your um, circuitry as you put it on, as you move things around. Um, these are easy to fix. The, the electronics that, uh, um, that were made by um, Jerry are very, very well done. So I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, the stickers feel really professional and they look great. I'm really happy with the way they turned out. I had never made um, die cut stickers before at this point. Um, but uh, yeah, they worked out pretty awesome. And I'm really happy with um, how, how sleek they look. And um, how, uh, how sturdy they are. They look great. They add a lot of professionalism to this. And uh, the last tricorder I built, I hand cut the stickers and it was horrible. The prints look great, but the moment you cut them, they look horrible. So um, this is a step up from that. I'm so glad I figured this out. And um, let's see, a couple more stickers and this should be done. So yeah, um, again, the bio light is off. I can fix that. The, let's see, the, the screen, uh, I still need to get some transparency, um, printable transparency, inkjet printable transparencies that I can print a screen on. And then I'm gonna put that in the, in that little window. And then eventually I hope to make a mod to allow for a, an actual video screen in there. I'm still going to figure that out. But until then, I think this looks pretty good. This is now very shelf worthy and cosplay worthy. I think it looks amazing. Um, that sticker's a little um, crooked, but we can fix that. But yeah, so here it is. As you can see, um, I've got it all together few missing things. I still need to put a screen in the front 
and those two transparent resin bits for the top lights. But other than that, it looks great. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Um, it looks and feels really professional. Um, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. The bio light, I will fix, that's easy enough. Uh, but overall, this has been an amazingly fun build. Um, so there you go.